What's up, freaks? Listen up, this is the distal bicep tear recovery repair without surgery video for weeks three to six. I did a previous video on weeks one to three, what that process was like, what was going on there. So now this is the update, the next days, the next three weeks. And these weeks has been all about really just uh, the right mindset and perspective and positivity and really just seen as a challenge, seen almost as a, a fun challenge. That's the way you need to think about it. Taking bad shit that happens to you and turn it into a, a challenge that you're going to overcome, a way for you to figure things out, a way for you to almost get excited about how am I going to overcome this thing? I'm doing it without surgery. How am I going to make it happen? How can I still train hard every single day? I don't take any days off. I also had about a three-week RV road trip, and it required setting things up and moving things around and cranking stuff and twisting stuff and screwing stuff. And this arm is, and here's the arm right here. When I'm holding it here, this, this bicep, if you could see a little weird lighting, let me change this lighting a little bit. This bicep is a, a little jiggly. And there's some shadows in here, but I could get a little flexion in it. Last week, I couldn't even get that flexion up here. And of course, it's missing all this space here because it's completely detached. But I'm using this arm like full, full. It's not changing my, my quality of life at all. So week three, after hitting in week three, I was already doing modified push-ups. So I would be at like an angled incline of at least probably two feet, wide feet. So normally my feet would be all the way together and I'd be on the floor, obviously my chest going down. And I wouldn't go all the way down. So it's angled, feet apart, angled, feet apart, and chest didn't go all the way down. So just modified push-ups we're, start, we're starting off with. And these are workouts around the road on this RV trip. This was doing just body weight, doing some bands. Bands started at three weeks, started getting full range of motion in the shoulder and up here is even do very light band for a bicep curl, which wasn't even getting any bicep activation. It was really flexing the, the arm with using the elbow joint and the, the elbow and forearm muscles. But the, the quality of life did, I needed to have use of this arm, especially for this RV trip. I had a bunch of events coming up and then a, a couple of flights mixed in the middle of the RV trip. And there really is not a ton of pain in there. There's, I've been working it now. Now we're in week six. And I'll get to that in a second, a little harder. So there's, there's some soreness sometimes or maybe a little twitching here and there. But overall, was I, need, I have th three dogs, three dogs that are over 70, 70 pounds and over. And sometimes have to hold all three of them at the same time on leashes on this trip. And it's, it's, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I did the surgery. So really, it was a decision on my quality of life, the, the lifestyle that I wanted to have, the, the downtime wasn't worth it for me to get a surgery and I'm figuring this out and, and working it on my own. So about at the 24 day mark, so a little bit past three weeks, I was at an event in Illinois. So we were on the road trip. I had to fly out to Illinois for a father son event. And I was doing dumbbell chest presses. So I would use 50 or 60 pounds in the uninjured hand. And I went up to 25 pounds in the actually started with 15 pounds just see how it felt and it felt good then went to 20 and up to 25 pounds eventually maxed out at 30 pounds of a chest press that was 24 days after tearing it up to 30 pound double arm chest press so i'd have 60 pounds this hand 30 pounds this hand and bam shoulder press i did just uh, same thing heavier on the on the left side and lighter on the the injured side and that that went up to 15 pounds on the shoulder press and this is at the 24 day mark right now. I'm in about six week mark. This video is going to scan the range from weeks three through six. All right. So there, that was 24 day mark. Then I, and, and I also had to drive, drove thousands of miles in an RV from California to Nevada, to Utah, to Wyoming, to Colorado, then back to Arizona, back to California in the middle of that. Had to get on a flight, so I'm carrying luggage. Have to go to the airport, get in and out of Ubers, lifting stuff in and out. So, all that stuff was possible. And we're talking from weeks four. That was weeks four to five that that was that was going on, really, or even three to four that was going on. And I still had scheduled surgery for August 16th, which would have been over a little over five weeks past the injury. That was just in case, as I was working on all this stuff. And working on this and, and seeing how the quality of life was working out. If any 
catastrophic changes happen. If it just totally just shredded and it didn't work and I wasn't able to do these things I was doing, I still had the sched surgery schedule and I, I canceled the surgery literally the night before to make sure that I was good to go. And what this has done has made me stay focused on staying positive, made me focus on getting creative and realize and, and that shit is going to be fine and it's going to be come back just as strong or even stronger than ever, even though it's going to be a weird shape and I really don't care about that. But it's also made me focus on other things that maybe I was, I was slacking on. Focusing on like stretching a little more, warming up the right way, not getting complacent, not, not for getting to stay hydrated, things like that. And it's going to make me do some things I haven't done in a while. Some, some different wrist and forearm exercises, a wrist roller thing I have where, the, where you, you lift the weights up or you roll the weights up with a stick. And so I did, I recorded two podcasts, in-person podcasts with this and traveling around what all this wouldn't have happened. I went on multiple hikes out in, you know, in the mountains of Colorado, the mountains of Utah, worked out every single day, setting up the RV, breaking down the RV, driving the RV. The range of motion was there pretty much fine. Once in a while, if it was a quick, weird extension movement or something that yanked it or stretched it too far, that's the worst thing. A fast extension with resistance is the worst thing really that's the only thing so far and the elbow gets elbow joints a little sore but that's always been an issue in here just from boxing and jujitsu and whatever else and overusing maybe some of these other muscles that were already strained and that happened from there was a there was a week a little bit probably a week or two before this happened to the bicep where i was doing dog training bike training with the dogs and all three dogs grabbed onto my one arm and were yanking it all over the place at the same time and that same week i was doing a lot of boxing same week went back into jujitsu so it was over straining on the elbow and it felt a little weak already that's probably part of what caused the injury along with not warming up not staying hydrated but these these none of these things would have happened and i was doing the uneven weights of the dumbbells i was and, and then i was even held mitts for for tyson for my son at the father son the squire program in illinois i held mitts and we kept it simple and it felt so good holding mitts because it was in here. Again, it didn't have that extension and we were controlling it. He knew he knows how to punch to make it clean so it's not like yanking on, on the arm or whatever. And there was one time we demonstrated, I put gloves on and he was just blocking punches. So I was throwing this quick little light punch at him and one of the punches at my right hand, I got a little too over excited and he kind of blocked it and the way it jammed, it yanked in there and that was the worst incident I had and I was for a split second thinking, all right, maybe it's going to get real bad and I'm going to have to go with this surgery, but it was fine. I stretched it out. I iced it, recovered it, and it was totally fine. So it was a lesson. Don't forget you're still injured. Don't get fooled by a good feeling. So you shouldn't get fooled by a, a good mood or a bad mood. Control your emotions. Control. Stay focused. Stay centered. Stay in the green, as we call it. Maintain your emotional discipline. Don't get complacent. And it was a reminder just how freaking amazing this human body is and what it's capable of. Like this muscle is detached, tendons completely separated and ripped. There's just mush and scar tissue in here building now. That's it. And again, a different angle now. You can maybe see without the shadow. This is just, this is me squeezing as hard as I can. You can see on this side when it's squeezing, it is solid. This one when I'm squeezing, it's, it's just jiggles like a big mushy water balloon. But now let's go into week five, week five through to six. Right now we just hit the six week mark. And I'm now doing double arm exercise with the same weight. I, I did some dumbbell chest press for the first time here in weeks, week five, uh, hitting the six week mark and did chest press. Started with 35 pound dumbbells, good. Went to 45, went to 50 and felt good. So I went to 60, did a set of 20 reps with 60 pound dumbbells at week five. Bent over rows single arm i'm just doing normal weights on this side not probably not as heavy as usual because i want to i don't want to overdo because this arm is still doing more so i'm going a little bit less than normal weight on this on the uninjured side the injured side i'm doing dumbbell bento rows i think i went up to like 35 and it was very light but i have to do kind of a, a weird overhand grip for a, for a row just because it's still the, that extension with weight of stretching it out when it's weighted is the worst thing like a farmer's walk a heavy farmer's walk is, the, is as bad as it gets which yesterday at the six mark week mark i did a couple sets of farmer's walk just with 45 pound 
plates with handles on them. This one held up for a couple of rounds and I went down to 25 pounds and eventually had to just do single arm because I felt it really stretching a little bit, didn't want to overdo it. But this week, also week five, I did double arm machines. I did machines totally fine. Chest press machine, cable roll machine, single arm cable machines. The only thing I'm not doing, I'm not doing pull downs because that's a, a different extension. The row, you can control the extension a little more and squeeze. The overhead is a little bit weirder of an extension, so I'm not doing lat pull downs yet on the machine. I did do the light shoulder press machine, or not even that light, normal, normal weight on a shoulder press machine, totally fine. No bicep exercises yet at all, just bands. I think I did a 10 pound up to 12 pound hammer curl the other day, but it literally was a forearm exercise. There was no bicep activation, some of the side of the arm here, and that's it. But it, it was still working. I'm training my ass off. I'm burning shit, oh, just as much calories as usual. As usual. Maintaining my abs as usual, staying fit, staying in shape. My conditioning is, is through the roof, especially at summertime, through the roof like usual. Just today, tried car, a bodyweight cardio for the first time, meaning like mountain climbers and squat thrusts and squat jumps and things on the floor in the push-up position and plank jacks. Did those, totally fine. Getting up and down is a little slow because I don't want to yank on it, so it, it brings the heart rate down just a little bit, but those worked totally fine. And... Did the farmer's walk yesterday, light farmer's walk. I could start getting a little, like if I focus and don't over squeeze it, I could get a little, look at that, I get a little bit of a flex in there and it's still a little mushy. It's still not solidified and the, the scar tissue still probably doing its thing in there and working it, but definitely not as solid, nowhere near as the other side. And that's only up here. If I'm here on the side with my palm in, there is zero. That's me squeezing the bicep, look at that. It can't, when the palm is in, when the palm is up, I can get a little squeeze. The second I turn it in, that's just loose and freaking jiggles there. But I am getting some flex in there. But again, this is all about the right mindset, the positivity, having faith in yourself, being optimistic, having the, the right type of discipline, uh, obviously staying strict to your nutrition. And this is why having daily disciplines and staying strict to your daily disciplines on a regular basis is so freaking important so that when you're injured, you just stick, you're still holding the line. You're still holding the freaking line with your daily disciplines. You're not crumbling and having to now start thinking, oh, I'm injured, I better start eating healthier because I'm not as active. If you're always eating healthy, you're always training, you're always getting good sleep, you're always staying hydrated, you're always taking your, the vitamins that you need to take, and you have the daily disciplines and non-negotiables, the healthy habits, you have faith that your body is going to do what it's supposed to do and that you're going to get through this and you're going to get through whatever other chaotic situation the freaking universe is going to throw at you next and the way it's going to kick you in the nuts and kick dirt in your face and you're down in the next situation. So this has been weeks four through six is where we're at. I haven't tried pull-ups yet. I hung from a bar with my toes touching the floor just to get a little pressure on it. I think this week coming up, I'm going to do some machine-assisted pull-ups just to see how it feels and I'll let you know when we go to the next video of weeks six through nine. So I'm usually doing this about every three-ish week block. So that seems to be around the amount of time where there's different levels and different tiers of the breakthroughs. But this is all about staying positive, staying optimistic, holding the freaking line, not crumbling because shit's not going your way and having faith in yourself, having faith in the process, having faith in your discipline and your habits and staying freaking focused and holding the line and remembering who the hell you are, what the frick you're made of, and not making any excuses. And this is what it's all about. This is how I'm gonna get through this. This is how I'm gonna make it even stronger than ever. And if you're have, going through any the similar injury or any other injury, this type of mindset, this type of work, this type of modifications, this type of having a solid process and not overdoing it, but still training hard and pushing yourself and pressing yourself, but holding the line on your mindset first and foremost over anything is what's going to get you through any one of these difficult situations. So leave a comment down below. What are you dealing with? What kind of injuries are you dealing with? How are you dealing with them? And what is your focus and mindset and modification look like through that process? I will keep you updated on the next upcoming three week time block. And in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses.